Well, good evening, church. It's uh, good to be with you again today. Thank the Lord for just a a nice, warm, dry place to be on this uh, kind of a chilly afternoon, dreary weather. But uh, just want to praise the Lord for the hope that He gives us. Uh, do uh, be much in prayer tonight. Be I pray that uh, each of you are. Uh, feeling the peace and the presence of the Lord this week that you've been reading about and thinking about the uh, about the Passion Week, about what Christ has done for us and is continuing to do for us. Tonight we're going to be in the fourth chapter of John, um, just the very first five or six verses. Some very familiar scripture to uh, most of you, but I uh, just want to thank the uh, Lord for for giving us his word and just for allowing us to uh, to read it to have it uh, I was thinking about how that uh, you know we are so abundantly blessed um, got a email today about uh, um, Samaritan's purse they're still shipping out shoe boxes some that have been delayed because of the pandemic and some are just now getting prepared to be uh, packed and, and shipped and uh, but uh, how that these young folks all around the world that receive those one of the greatest treasures that they have in them is uh, is these Bible studies Bible lessons the stories of Jesus and you know I think we take that for granted sometime we take it for granted that we live in a place where we have such access to the Word of God that we have such access to being able to gather together uh, openly and share the Word of God. And so uh, tonight, as we open God's Word and begin to study it, let's just uh, let's study with a thankful heart, study with a, with a heart prepared to hear what the Spirit says to the church. And uh, my prayer tonight is that, that you would hear from the Lord and not from me. It's good to see faces popping up, names popping up, uh, church members, uh, loved ones, different ones uh, that are joining us on this uh, live feed and just uh, knowing that uh, that we have this capability and this ability. But I'll ask you to pray tonight, pray for our people that have lost loved ones. <clears throat> you know, this uh, past week, as I said, we had two funerals in one day. Um, it seems as though over the last two years, there has been so many loss of loved ones, so many uh, in the church, <clears throat> but uh, God is still in control, and uh, we praise Him for that. Do pray for our folks that are sick, the, our folks that are um, waiting on results from doctor's tests, some of them that are uh, getting ready to uh, have medical procedures done. Uh, ask you to... Uh, just pray for them. Uh, and I have a, uh, a friend by the name of uh, Steve Epperson. I ask you to remember him tonight. He uh, works with me and my son. And um, he's a good Christian man I've known for a number of years. Uh, has battled with cancer uh, a couple of times. And uh, recently had a uh, scan checking and they found a spot on one of his lungs. And... Uh, so, you know, he is a little bit down thinking that this is going to be his third different bout, third different type of cancer. But just to pray if it be the Lord's will that it was not anything that uh, when they check it again, it won't have grown and won't be any issue. But uh, and there's so many out there that uh, that need our prayers tonight. Pray for our nation. Pray that uh, this Sunday that uh, as we gather in churches and, you know, there'll be some people come out to church that don't normally come out uh, at, at various churches. Pray that God would just open ears, that they would hear what he has to say to them. And uh, as we have our egg hunts, you know, we have one on Saturday that uh, as we try to present the gospel to these children, that uh, seeds would be sown. And if there's any that are prepared and ready, uh, that the harvest would be made. So just thank the Lord. Again, just going to pray tonight, and then we're going to get right on into the study. We're uh, in John 4th chapter. 
Father, as we come to you tonight, thank you. Father, as I sit here and I look out the window and I see the wind blowing and, and rain splatting against the window, Lord, and feel the chill in the air, I just thank you for the fact that, uh, God, that we have our comfortable homes. God, that we have, uh, God, our shelters that we have. Uh, Lord, that you've given us uh, so much that, uh, that we want to praise you for and thank you for. Father, I know that each and every one, Lord, as I've seen faces pop up on the screen, that there are needs, there are concerns. God, every family has things going on that is such great needs, Lord, but uh, you're greater than these needs, Lord. And Father, I, I just laid at your feet. And Father, I ask that you would just help us to focus on you. Help us to focus on what you did for us what Christ did on the cross of Calvary, and Father, what he's still doing as he sets and makes intercession for each and every one of us. And Lord, I praise you tonight for your love. I praise you tonight for your mercy. I ask as we go through the remainder of this week, God, that we would never forget Jesus and his sacrifice for us. And Lord, I pray as we open the word tonight, God, that we would see your love, your mercy, your direction in every word. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And everything we'd ask, we'd ask in Christ's glorious name. Amen. Well, church tonight, as I said, we're going to be in uh, the fourth chapter of the book of John. Uh, about the, We're going to be in the, read. I think I'm going to read the first six verses and see how far we get, whether we get down through all six or not. Uh, but uh, very familiar scripture. Uh, I was thinking as I was studying through this and... Um, I think it was a couple of years ago that I uh, preached out of this uh, scripture, and uh, probably everyone out there that's listening tonight has heard the story of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and uh, but uh, you know we're living in a time where it seems as though um, we we talk about bigotry, we talk about racism, we talk about uh, cultural issues. Uh, and what we have to understand, this is nothing new. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to say it's nothing new, so therefore it's okay and acceptable. It's not. But um, in the sight of Christ, um, he doesn't see people from different races. He doesn't see people from different cultures. He sees us as either a sinner needing to be saved or one of his children that he's already saved from our sin. And as we read this tonight, we're going to see this Samaritan woman who, uh, in our, in, I, I was kind of, uh, I guess, laughing a little bit, chuckling a little bit, and it's, and it's a sad situation. But when you read her story, uh, it reads more like you're uh, reading a, a Hollywood tabloid uh, about some of our celebrities or some uh, about some of the people that some of us may know and you know and i have known personally individuals that were similar to this uh and uh, but so they've always been here it's just the fact that um the very same thing that she needed then is what our people need today so uh, john chapter 4 verse 1 and it reads now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee, and, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And uh, as we stop right there and begin to look at this, and uh, if you remember what we had been reading about, we've been reading about John the Baptist had been exalting Jesus. John the Baptist had been, uh, you know, had pointed out the fact that Jesus was the Lamb of God. Uh, we've been reading about the fact that um, Christ had talked to Nicodemus, had proclaimed that you must be born again. 
Uh, and then in the last part of the last chapter, last week, it was a situation where John's disciples had come to him and, and uh, talked about people leaving him, heading to um, follow Jesus. And as some writers say, that it says, now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and parted again for Galilee. And you think, well, why is he, uh, you know, why is that a big deal? Well, one of the things that the Pharisees were doing, which is one of the things that a lot of people do in our world today, uh, they were trying to cause a competition between John and Jesus. Uh, they were not looking and saying, you know, as John said, he was the forerunner. He was the herald of Jesus. John the Baptist was the one that had, had been come uh, crying out to make way uh, the, the, the path for the Messiah. And, but the Pharisees were trying to cause some contention there. And I was just thinking, you know, it's just like in our world today. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll we'll have different ministries doing different things. And um, sometimes Satan will try to point out and say, those folks are doing this or those folks are doing that. It's like with our food pantry. And, and I know I've mentioned it a lot lately, but it's one of those things that as it occurs uh, and as we kind of and it gets set up and moving and going in the direction that God would have it to go. Uh, you hear people say, well, you know, so-and-so's having a food drive. So-and-so's having a food distribution. Oh, did you hear how many they uh, did? Oh, did you know what they're giving away and doing? And the church, you know, it's not a competition. If, if, if there's a church down the road that is also helping the hungry, also sharing the gospel, also reaching the lost, uh, we should be praising God for that. It's not a competition, but us against them. Uh, in reality, Jesus said, you're for me or you're against me. You're either for me or you're for Satan. It's not that, oh, you're either for this church or this church. If we're a God-fearing, Bible-believing, uh, Christ-honoring church, we're all brothers and sisters. But Jesus left Judea and departed for Galilee because he didn't want this contention between his followers and the ones that were still following John. He didn't want the Pharisees to stir up a big trouble and stir up a big thing. And also, his time had not yet come. And you'll hear him say that time again, like when his mother came to him uh, at the wedding feast and said for, um, you know, mentioning the fact that they'd run out of wine. Uh, and, you know, he was telling her, my, my time has not yet come. Um, different times throughout his scripture, he will say, my time has not yet come. And what he was saying, that, that showdown with the Pharisees, if you would, that final proclamation and, and, and exclamation to tell the world and show the world that he is the Messiah had not yet come. So what he did was he moved on to another region that there was still work to be done. There were still people to be witness to work uh, and to the gospel to be spread. So when he left Judea and departed again for Galilee, and if you ever looked at a map, and um, it, it's fairly much a straight line, a straight shot, but one of the things that we have to understand is being a uh, to go there though you would be going through Samaria through Samaritan territory and uh, if you remember your history about the Samaritans they were considered a half-breed uh, mongrel tribe if you would it was from a uh, uh, when they were had been taken captive and one of the captive nations that had taken them in had moved some of the Jews out, had moved in people from other lands, and they had intermarried with Jewish people. And so they no longer had the pure Jewish heritage. And they couldn't trace their Jewish, Jewish heritage by both sides, mother and father, all the way back. And so by the Orthodox Jew, by the upstanding Jew, 
they were considered uh, not really Jews. Uh, and the thought about uh, the Samaritans were at that time was uh, it was better to be considered a dog than a Samaritan. Uh, if you wanted to say something really bad about someone, and we'll see over in, uh, I was trying to remember exactly, uh, uh, yeah, in John, the 8th chapter, the 48th verse, um, the Samaritans were thought so poorly of that when someone was trying to um, say something bad about someone, the response would be the Jews uh, responded to Jesus and said, aren't you a Samaritan and have a demon? Uh, you know, that was like a double whammy, terrible thing to say. So the situation was that good Jews, you didn't set foot in that land. You went around. Uh, also, if you did go through uh, Samaritan territory, you had to have a ritual cleaning uh, b before you could go to the temple or worship afterwards. If you went through uh, Samaritan territory, you would not use one of their vessels, one of their drinking vessels, uh, uh, eat from one of their utensils because those were considered unclean. And if you did, you would also have to have a ritual cleaning. And the uh, Samaritans, they considered themselves to be the Jews. And so they had their figured that Shisham was their center of worship and that they had their, uh, I think it was Mount Gershom is where they had a temple and was worshipped, uh, had a place of worship. So, Eve, so they weren't even looking at Jerusalem. They weren't looking at the temple there. They weren't looking at any of these things. So there was this big battle going on where they were. and But it says, and he had to pass through Samaria. And some things says he must needs pass through. Uh, it is necessary, or other translations say that it was necessary for him to pass through. And although there was three different ways to get there, for a good Jew going through this Samaritan territory, was the least, it was the shortest distance, but it was the one that they normally wouldn't take. And as we'll read a little bit further in the fourth chapter, you know, some would say, well, he, he said he had to go through because he was in a hurry to get to Galilee. Uh, but I'm going to, a little spoiler alert, he lingered in that territory for two additional days teaching the people after that they had come to recognize him as the Messiah. So it wasn't a situation where I'm in a big hurry to get to Galilee, so I got to take the shortcut. It was in, there is a spiritual need in Samaria uh, that I have to go and meet and take and, and do this thing. I have to be there. There's a compulsion from the Holy Spirit within me. And I don't know if any of you all have ever that, if you've ever felt a compulsion from the Holy Spirit that you had to go see someone, a compulsion from the Holy Spirit that you had to uh, be at a certain place uh, and didn't really know why, didn't really understand what was happening. But once you got there, uh, God revealed it all to you. And I may have told this story before, but years and years ago when uh, uh, Brenda's grandfather passed away, um, we were, they, they'd they called and he was in the hospital with pneumonia and said they were going to have to put a pacemaker in. So it wasn't a, you know, wasn't a big deal, just a, a very simple procedure, uh, put in a pacemaker because his heart had been racing and running away. So Brenda, I, I stayed home with the kids and Brenda got her mom and uh, went on to the hospital. And, but they hadn't been gone 30 minutes until it was just, just an overwhelming compulsion to me that I needed to be there for them. Uh, so I called my parents and said, hey, can I bring the kids down? Um, I, I need to go. Took the kids, dropped them off at mom and dad's, drove to there, went to the waiting room, had been in the waiting room about two minutes when the surgeon walked in <clears throat> and said, I'm sorry, um, he didn't make it. Uh, and it was just as though, you know, God had told me that, you know, the spirit of God had come had compelled me 
and that I needed to be there because he didn't make it. He didn't survive the surgery. The uh, patriarch of their family, the, the kind of the glue that held them together was gone. Uh, and I needed to be there for my family. So church, sometimes God will have an appointment for you You'll have that overwhelming sense that I need to be here. I need to go there. I need to talk to this person. And my uh, advice is, if God does that, there's a reason, and you need to go do that. And there was a reason why he had to pass through. He had to go through Samaria. And it says, so when he came to the town of Samaria called Sychar, and uh, uh, Sychar they, if you read through history there, you know, there, there, some archaeologists and theologians and say, said there is no real record of that. Um, there, there's the thought that Sychar was actually Shisham, uh, and Sychar, uh, in the, in the language at that time, um, denoted untruth or liar or, uh, false, so it was um, believed to be a place of falsehood, of liars, of thieves, of drunkards, that it was a very, very bad place. And so that, but when Jesus went there and he came to this place, it was near the field that Jacob had given to his sons and Jacob's well was there. And there again, as Samaritans, you know, as Jews, as the the purebred Jews, if you would, they looked at the Samaritans and didn't think they had any uh, right to that. But the Samaritans looked and they claimed Jacob as their lineage also. And they looked at this as our father Jacob's well. The Jews, this is our father Jacob's well. But it happened to be in a land that was at this time um, settled and predominantly Samaritans. So as he went there, it says Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well, and it was about the sixth hour. <clears throat> and if you remember your the time on how that they uh, tell time, time was uh, really began... Uh, at about daylight, which was considered about six o'clock, so the twelfth, the sixth hour would have really been noon, and you know about the lunch hour, about the time, and they said it, which was a common time for women to uh, come to the well to gather the water, to gather the things that they, you know, to go back. But at this particular time, others had come. Uh, uh, others, they had come and gone, but then, then she came. Uh, and if you did read where that she was kind of there by, uh, without others. And uh, so uh, as we read on down, the seventh verse, it says, And a woman from Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. Uh, and, you know, it's a very simple thing. But there is so much in that one verse. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Uh, doesn't mention any other people. It was just Jesus there and this Samaritan woman. But it was also something that was a Jewish man generally would not speak to a woman that was not of his family. It was considered something you just didn't do. And especially not to a Samaritan woman. And especially not to one coming at this time of day that was of such ill repute. And of course, she didn't have a big sign on her saying, look, you know, I'm, I'm this woman that has done all these horrible things. I'm this woman that has got all this. But, you know, they were, um, as I said, they were this mixed breed created by the Assyrian captivity and, you know, uh, of the 10 northern tribes and, you know, this ha had happened about 730 years, roughly, before. And so, the, you know, there was just, it was a history, a good long history of this enmity, of this uh, being unpure and not. Uh, uh, so, 
it was uh, uh, in another little fact about the Jewish and the Gentile. It said that uh, if a Jew uh, marries a Gentile or a Samaritan, if a they, they would the Jewish family would conduct a funeral service for to them that person was dead. They were no longer alive. So, you know, that's kind of setting the stage. And, uh, and I'm not going to get into all the rest of, of the scripture. We'll get into a lot more of it next week. Uh, but I want you to understand. And I want you to think, too, about how that we think about people in our culture today. You know, how many of us, are, uh, when we... We look at people and we think about people. Do we think about their worthiness? Do we think about um, should we affiliate or associate with them? Um, but then I want to take you back and, and I want to uh, finish up with this and uh, turn back over to Genesis. About, uh, let's see, second chapter of Genesis. And I'll, uh, where the Lord created the garden, and the Lord created all these things, and the Lord created man he created man so uh, that man would not be alone it says in the let's go to the fifth of our second chapter it says when no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up for the lord god had not caused it to rain on the land and there was no man to work the ground and a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. You read that and see that he created man. He created him, uh, and he breathed into his nostrils and made him a living soul, a living being. And church, we need to understand that it doesn't say there that and he, the Lord God, formed several different types of men. It doesn't say that he uh, formed several different races of men. It doesn't say he formed uh, a individual that could decide what he wanted to be. This is then get the Lord God formed the man. God formed man. We all come from the very same one. And when the Jews were looking at the Samaritans, uh, they needed to look at them and say, formed by God. Yeah, it was... Uh, don't have the pure bloodline that the Jews looked at as being necessary. Uh, church, there's not a one of us, not a one of us probably has the pure bloodline that that uh, uh, goes all the way back there. I was thinking about a young lady that uh, when she was in high school, she did a family tree, and I'm going to finish with this. Uh, once One of the assignments that she had, uh, was to do a family tree. And I don't know how many of you all have ever done your genealogical uh, study. Uh, a lot of people do. Some people, when they do it, uh, wish they hadn't. <laughs> they find things out about their family they wish they never knew. But this young lady did it. And when she did, and, and uh, she found uh, some things that she, uh, it embarrassed her. And uh, she didn't want to turn it in. She didn't want... Uh, the teachers to know this about her family. She didn't want the teachers to uh, know this about, you know, uh, her genealogy because she thought that somehow it lessened things. Church, every one of our genealogies point all the way back 
to the second chapter of Genesis. Every last one of us, we're all made from the same dust. The same God, the same creator breathed into us. Yeah, our families and even some of us may have done things that uh, we're not proud of, things that um, we look around and, and say, you know, the world would look down upon. But the one thing we need to understand that we were created in the image of Almighty God. And as Christ said, it was necessary for him to go to Samaria. It's because he had a an appointment to bring salvation to this Samaritan woman. In the end times when the Lord calls an end to this all, when death finds us, the, he's not going to look for our earthly genealogy because it's a messed up thing for all of us. He's going to look and see, have you had that appointment with Jesus? Have you, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Has the blood been applied so that you are my child? And on that day, he'll either say, enter in thy good and faithful servant, or depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I knew you not. And church, that's, that's what we desire, is to hear, enter in my good and faithful servant. And there's one way to know that, and that's to have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We're coming up on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. The Sunday that uh, that marks the final victory over death, hell, and the grave. We look around in our world today and people are still dying. It's true. We look around in our world today and, and see people are still being buried. It's true. Uh, we know that, unfortunately, people are still going to hell. It's true. But it's not because the victory hadn't been won. It is won through and only through the blood of the Lamb. It's good to be with you tonight, church. I ask you to pray for us. Pray for our family. Pray for one another. Pray for the children that will be coming out on Saturday for the Easter egg hunt at the church. Pray for all of our adults. I know some of the volunteers was talking Sunday after church. Some are so excited to come and be a part of that. And uh, it just thrills me to know volunteers that are so excited to come and be a part of that. So pray for them. Pray for our children. Pray that uh, that as we share the gospel with them, that they will hear and understand what the Lord is, has to say to them. I uh, ask you to join me as we pray tonight. And in prayerfully this Sunday, we will see you at church. Invite everybody that you can. If they can't come, let them know that we'll be having it on live uh, stream still. Uh, and also the following week, April the 11th, we will be having Sunday school. The late uh, the Sunday school teachers have been working real hard. People have been working real hard getting the classrooms in order, getting everything set up. Uh, looking forward to that. So I ask you to, to make preparations for that also. So join me as we pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this another day that you've given into us, Lord. God, a day that uh, that you've allowed us to gather for your holy word. And Father, I know it, it, as, as I was studying this, as I was reading this, and Lord, I know there's so much in it. And it's so easy to, God, it would have been so easy to just to go on and on and on and on. But Father, I, I know that the desire was that that you wanted us to see that God, Jesus has appointments, that he comes and meets us where we are and comes and meets us in our condition. And God, and he, when he leaves, Father, if we're willing, he, we, he doesn't leave us in the condition he finds us. And God, he turns us into that new creation. And Lord, I pray now today, Lord, if there's been one at the hearing of our voice, God, the one that, uh, has had that unction from the Lord, that, that call, that, that bidding, Lord, to come unto me, Father, that they would come to Jesus. Father, I pray for this upcoming weekend, for 
the Easter celebration, God, for the egg hunt on Saturday, but Lord, for our uh, service on ch at church on Sunday, for the Lord, that we would celebrate a risen Savior, for that's who we serve. God, we love you. We praise you. And everything I'd ask, I'd ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you. Love you, church. Thank the Lord for you.